You can't do anything about what happens to you, but you can absolutely do something about how you respond to what happens to you. Hello, and welcome to the Creative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. In the show, my guests and I explore how we can use creativity to do our best work and live our best lives. I talk with authors, musicians, actors, scientists, and others who are all pushing the envelope to live fully, creatively, and authentically. Listen in to get the scoop on how you can do it too. Hi, and welcome to the Creative Mindset Podcast. My name is Isolde Trachtenberg, and I am your host, and so happy that you're here. Wow, there's so many changes going on right now. It's actually incredible. Uh, This podcast certainly has changed a lot. It's gone from uh, mostly me exploring topics on my own to a mostly me talking with guests. And I've had some amazing guests recently. I had uh, the former communications officer from the International Space Station, Beth Mund, and a uh, tremendous actor and voice director and, and uh, so many other accolades I could heap on him, Paul Liberti. And coming up soon, we're going to have some incredible surprise guests. I'm very excited. But the uh, this podcast is always going to be about creativity it's always going to be about how that creative mindset that ability to to think laterally is the most important thing because if you're if you're gung ho on one course of action and only one course of action when you get some kind of surprise or you get an obstacle in your way you tend to trip over yourself and land on your butt. So the question becomes, how do you build that resilience? How do you build that elasticity so that when things do come up, that it doesn't knock you down, but instead you're able to bob and weave and move forward from being able to move laterally. And moving laterally means going off to the side a little, looking for uh, unusual solutions. And it also means reacting, not uh, responding, not reacting. I can't believe I said that. It also means responding, not reacting. And the difference between the two is essentially the number of breaths that you take between what happens and what you do about it. If you don't breathe, if you don't stop for a minute and don't go, okay, let me check in with myself. Let me figure out what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, and then figure out a plan of action. If you do a knee jerk thing, it's going to be there's I don't remember who it is who says it. some people attribute it to Tony Robbins. But I'm just going to say that somebody says it. If you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to keep getting what you've always gotten. That's the quote. And I don't know what the attribution is. But it's so, so crucial for us to Think about that as something that's uh, that's applicable to our daily lives, right? So, so the way to avoid that instinctive response, that boom, knee-jerk reaction, is to stop and wait. And one of the things that I have been doing recently is I've been going on a journey of teaching how to do that stop and wait. And it is all about meditation. And really, it's if I dig below that, I would say that it's all about the breath. If you stop and you breathe for even a minute when something has happened, you will have a much better idea, a much clearer vision of exactly what it is that you need to do and have to do and get to do in order to walk your best path forward. So, for example, if you, I mean, look, uh, let me step back a little bit. If you if you cut your finger, standing there and waiting isn't necessarily the best thing, but jumping up and down and going, ah! I cut my fingers ah, is also not the best thing. So taking a calming breath and kind of going, okay, this has happened. Let me take it in. And now I'm going to figure out where are the Band-Aids? Where's the rubbing alcohol? Where's the stuff or the antiseptic, whatever you're going to use? Where's the stuff I need to take care of this? And the more calm you are about taking care of it, the faster you'll get it done. Have you ever noticed, by the way, when you are rushing to get something done, like when I'm rushing around trying to get out of the house or trying to get the dishes done or whatever, doing my morning routine, I bump into things a lot more because I'm not as deliberate. I'm not as purposeful with what I'm doing. And it's the same kind of thing. It's the same. What's my awareness level? If my awareness level is rush, 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 then I am not bringing in for myself an awareness of what's going on around me in time and space. And in order to really get to that place where I can be aware, I keep coming back to breath. I keep coming back to that 
what do I need to do in order to walk my best path? And that awareness isn't something that we're born with. We're born with, you know, basically, I imagine an awareness that all of a sudden it's bright and this bites and we don't like it and things are all of a sudden different. But other than that, I'm not sure, you know, we may have some thoughts about it. I have no idea. But certainly we don't have language to express it. But it does bring me to an interesting point. What is the very first thing you do right after you're born? The very first thing you do is you breathe. You breathe. It's that simple. You take your first breath being alive. And that's so interesting, isn't it? Because when we're in that position of being born, it's the most radical, hugest thing that probably ever happens to us as live beings, you know, because there is no bigger change than being safe in the womb and then all of a sudden being out in the world. There's just no bigger change no matter what it is. And yet the very first thing we do is breathe. So so I'm going to encourage you to start at the beginning. Anytime you are facing that, what do I do now? Stop, take a breath or two or three, and then move forward. And the question that you can ask yourself, and it's a really important question to ask, is if, if I were a person who knew what to do here, what would I do? Because often you, you may not know the answer to that what's the emergency when you're thinking about it consciously, but if you step back or step laterally one over and you go, but if I were someone who knew what to do, what might I do? What thing might I think up? What action might I be inspired to take? if I knew what to do. And you don't get to that place until you take a breath and you think laterally. And that thinking laterally bit, that's creativity. As soon as you get into that space of going, okay, let me breathe and then see what other solutions there might be, that's creative thinking. And one of the reasons I started this podcast is so that I could talk about this with many, many different kinds of people who are already doing it. And when you're an artist and you think laterally, you come up with innovative solutions. When you're a person in business and you think laterally, you come up with innovative solutions. It all comes back from that same inspirational spark. And that inspirational spark doesn't start until and unless you take a breath. And in fact, let's put it this way. When you're about to do something that scares you, what do you do? You go, Okay, let's do it. And that is so important, that inhale, that in-breath, you know. And and the same goes if you're excited about something. Oh, my goodness, I'm so, you know, whatever it is. That breath in is the body's way of preparing you for whatever lies ahead. And the more you do that, the more you prepare for for whatever lies ahead through breath, the more you build that awareness and the less you're going to spend, less time you're going to spend in what they call fight or flight, that reaction mode instead of response. We want to respond. We want to get to a place where we're moving forward from a responding place rather than a reactive place because reactive is instinct. And that might save you if a boulder is rolling downhill towards you. But if you have to navigate a tricky business situation or a tricky situation with your family or even a tricky situation with a piece of creative work that you're doing, whatever it is, if you're haphazard with it, if you're reactive with it, you're not going to get as clear a picture of what is the best thing to do. So uh, I'm going to invite you. I'm going to put a link to this in the show notes. I'm going to invite you to follow... Uh, a breath and meditation uh, video that I put up the other day. And it was actually really interesting because it's it's breath and motion. It's only about 10 minutes. And I want you to see what it's like to to get into that space of, of just breathing and giving yourself permission and reminding yourself that you deserve to have that space and time to take care of yourself. And breath is something that is incredibly good at taking care of you because it's like I tell all of my life coaching clients, we can last about three weeks without food. We can last about three days without water, but we can only last about three minutes without air. So breath is crucial to life. And I want you to to try it. I want you to try that breath meditation because uh, I think it's going to be helpful to you 
to begin building that awareness so that you can walk your best path with clarity and with certainty, not because you're reacting, but because you've taken the time to think about it, to be at peace with it, and then to respond purposefully. And I, I'm. this is all something I'm thinking about a lot right now because I'm developing a, a little class that's going to be uh, available within the next few weeks. And it's all about that idea of response, not reaction, because response gives you that peace of mind, clarity, and certainty that you're walking the best path. And reaction gives you the uh, instinctive action that that may or may not be the right thing to do. And don't you want to be more certain than may or may not be? Don't you want to be more than 50%? Heck, I'd like to be 100% certain that I'm doing the right thing and going in the right direction. And one of the best ways to do that is to breathe before you start. You got to start where you are. No question. Wherever you are is where you start. But, you know, they, they say that, that you, can't, you, can't, uh, you can't avoid what happens, but you can absolutely figure out how to react to what or respond to what happens. I keep using react and I need to get out of that mindset too because it's a response thing. So let me try that again. You can't do anything about what happens to you, but you can absolutely do something about how you respond to what happens to you. And I want you to really know that because it's so important. I'm going to be talking a lot more about that as we move further and further into this time of of sheltering at home and what's happening to all of us all over the world. I want us to keep building that awareness so that we can be more clear, more calm, and more focused on what really matters. I hope that you've enjoyed today's podcast episode. Please look for the link to the video in the show notes so that you can uh, you can try out this idea of breath and motion and, and try it for yourself and see how it works for you. My name is Isolde Trachtenberg. If you are enjoying what you're hearing, please consider leaving a review and subscribing to the show because coming up in the next few weeks, I'm going to have some amazing guests. I'm super excited about the people who are coming up who are going to be talking about how they think creatively and how they live their lives in that creative mindset that lets them live fully, authentically, and wonderfully. I hope that you enjoyed today's show. I hope that you are staying well and staying healthy. And this is Isolde Trachtenberg for the Creative Mindset Podcast, sending you all of my love. Thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Today's episode was produced by Azolda Trachtenberg and is copyright 2020. Today's music was Kevin McLeod's Ave Marimba, brought to you by Creative Commons License 3.0 and Summer Fashion by Alexander Shemaluev. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, this is Azolda Trachtenberg and I send you all of my love.